So, early this spring, I decided that I was going to use my tax refund money to build a greenhouse in my back patio area. But that money ended up uh, going to pay off my student loans instead of building a greenhouse. I had already done all the demo work to kind of prep the area before I laid down the foundation for the greenhouse. <laughs> it's a mess back here. I need to clean this up. And I want to start with this gravel. What I need is a wheelbarrow. I don't have a wheelbarrow. I could build a wheelbarrow. Right. How do I do that? So for my wheelbarrow project, I think I'm going to start with just this old pallet here. It should have plenty of wood on there. I've got some scrap uh, plywood here that the neighbor was throwing out. It should give me more than enough material to work with here. So right now I'm just kind of flicking over the pallet, seeing where the nails poke out, seeing where I need to hammer them back in or pull them out if I can. And then I'll come through here with my circular saw and I'll just cut these off. So there's one spot in here. I wasn't able to pull the nail fully out. Uh, it broke off halfway in there. So I'm going to mark it on both sides so I don't accidentally try to place a cut there. Can't miss pink! Boop. And always remember to wear these safety glasses. Wow, this board sucks. I am now the height of woodworker fashion. My first thought was to attach about three planks along the side here. And then inside I'd attach more that go on up. I'd really like to have... I don't want to take up any of this inside space, so I'm going to take a break think about it. Given a fair bit of thought, and I think this is what I'm going to do. Cut this board at an angle here so that I can attach it out and get more volume out of this uh, relatively small piece of plywood. So I wish I had cut this board down the center and rotated them both this way to get a little bit more width out of the piece. Hmm. Well, I can't find my miter gauge. <clears throat> well, the most keen observers of you were probably having a pretty good laugh at me earlier. While I was looking for the miter gauge, uh, I decided instead of using those boards, I'm going to use 2 by 4 instead. I want that extra support along the walls for uh, filling it up. To make sure that I've got a good fit here, these boards aren't the same thicknesses and they're not the same widths, even though they're both 2x4s. So, what I'm doing to check to make sure that these are accurate cuts to each other. So I'm holding the bottoms up to each other. The bottoms should still be about the same size and they are here. But, just as importantly, I am lining up the bottoms 
checking the angles, and that'll stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, and the angle is really very good here. So I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the screw that I have in there now back out. I'm going to switch to the longer drywall screws that I have here. And I'm going to end up driving them most of the way by hand. Oh, oh, oh. Finally. That sucked. Well, I just had the terrible and unsafe idea to cut the handle off of this screwdriver so I can actually drive these screws properly now at the hardware store. I mean, it was easy enough to take the handle off, but uh, probably not very safe. <laughs> and as unsafe as that might have been, it was totally worth it. Alright, this is the satisfying part of the project. Improve this jig. It's just not cutting it. I don't know how soon I'll be doing that again, but this is awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, nice round here. For two. Still one piece. Alright, so I'm going to shove this drill bit into the hole, inscribe my spot, get a nice little dimple, and then I'll just drill my one inch hole slightly above that, you know, half an inch or so. So, right here's my mark. One inch for the bit, plus another half an inch or so. All right. Beautiful. how something that's been taking you, what, 20 minutes? Goes down to about five with the right tool. Ah, nice and snug.
data applied directly to the dead. I kind of want to do my terrible idea right now. <laughs> Told you this is a terrible idea. That made a pretty enormous difference, and it's already pretty good, but this is better. Remember kids, don't try this at home. I'm not even close to a professional. <laughs> Rustic charm. Alright, here it is. It's not quite done. Uh, it still needs some kind of... needs better handles on that. Uh, I tried using these. I was actually concerned that these wouldn't hold up. They're from an old uh, vintage chair that just... it was not worth saving. These actually weren't the problem. These held up great. Uh, the end grain on the wood, the 2x4s from the pallet that you saw on the base, those actually split and broke off when I loaded this up with bricks. Another thing about this is that it's really top heavy. I'll be taking off this top layer of boards and I think that'll fix the problem. So the lessons that were my takeaways from this particular project is if you need a tool, take the time to go out and buy it, or if you're going to make it, make it right. You probably saw that I made this wheel cutting jig for the table saw, and that I had to remake it later because it just didn't work. I threw that chunk over my shoulder, I was like, Ugh, this is stupid. This worked great, but this still could have worked better. Really take the time to make the tool properly if you're going to make something. The other thing that I made was this jam chuck. I tried a few different things because I was being lazy but I really should have just made the jam truck right from the get-go. The other thing that I probably should have gone to the hardware store to get was this driver bin. So the next thing was that making wheels on a table saw, that is a whole lot of fun. <laughs> and granted, it's not very safe, but listen to your table saw. Pay attention to it. Don't force anything. If it's not working right, back it up fix whatever's going wrong and do it again. Once you get a good result though, it, it's a lot of fun. So another thing that I learned is that gluing a whole bunch of scrap cutoffs is surprisingly effective. You saw me doing that for the wheel and I've been playing with it, I've been loading this up with a ton of bricks and it's been holding up just fine. So a couple of thank yous. I wanted to thank Steve Ramsey, Woodworking for Mere Mortals, for being part of my inspiration to start doing YouTube videos. If you're not a subscriber of his, I highly recommend it. Uh, he tries to do short, simple projects that you can do in a weekend as kind of a side, just having fun kind of thing, which is really the core of how I like to do woodworking. I also want to thank the post chat community on Twitter. Uh, if you have a video editing question, hashtag it post chat, and hopefully someone will eventually get back to you. I also want to thank Lightworks for providing a pretty good video editing software, but more importantly, I want to thank you for supporting Linux and making that platform an option for your software. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's kind of long. Uh, I had a lot of fun on this build, especially that wheel. I know I've already said that, uh, but it really was. You can follow me on Twitter. I am bitxdeadweight, and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. I'm on Instagram as ultramaticorange, and I'll also put a link to the post chat community as well as uh, Steve Ramsey's wheelbarrow project, which was more decorative, but it was just as functional as this. Alright, thank you again, and I hope you like and subscribe to the